Some of the most popular pets in the entire world are cats, but some of us can't own cats. So today we're gonna go over the top five cat-like reptiles. My name's Adam, this is Flutie, who is not a cat. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Now the reason that I did this video with Flutie for dogs and also cats is because I can't actually have a cat near me with my face still looking like this. My eyes will puff up, my nose will run, my throat will close. I'm allergic to cats. Come on! And that really sucks because I actually really like cats. So today let's go over the top five hypoallergenic scale versions or as close to. I'm not saying these reptiles are gonna love you like a cat, but they exhibit cat-like behaviors. And that's the point of the list. And also Flutie's a good representative because like he won't even look at the camera. Number five, Maclet's pythons. Now I didn't even think of this one and I was talking to my friend Annalise at All Canadian Reptile Girl and she made mention that her Maclet's python knocks things off shelves. And I'm thinking, you know what? Our boreal snakes in general are a great representative of cat-like behavior. They don't really want anything to do with you. They have crazy food responses as a blanket statement in general, and they knock things over all the time. Every single time that I have my boa out, it knocks something over, not something off of a shelf, off of a table, whatever. And it seems like Maclats pythons just a little bit more rare, but very cool, very underrated snakes are kind of the same. Now, Maclats pythons are definitely a go-to, I wanna have one day species. They don't get too big. They're not so big that they're dangerous. They aren't the tamest snake generally, but you can definitely tame them out to a point where they are handleable and they're not nipping at you in any way, shape or form normally, but also they really love food. And if there's anything I remember from having cats as a kid, uh, they like food and that's all they like about you. So like everything else on the list, a Maclats python will tolerate you, uh, but that's pretty much it. They're beautiful to watch though. They perch up, they look at you, kind of looking at you, judging down from their perch. I think Maclats pythons are absolutely amazing and super underrated snakes. Number four, sliders. We're talking yellow belly sliders, red ear sliders. We're talking kind of larger, medium sized aquatic turtles. I have a yellow belly slider. I really love this yellow belly slider, buggy, but uh, just barely tolerates me. Kind of like, he does a hissing thing like a cat also. He'll be up on his basking platform out of the water. He'll kind of look at me like, what do you want? And if I have food, then all of a sudden we're best friends. But otherwise this animal doesn't really want too much to do with me. Uh, they kind of just sit there and, and judge you. It's like, these are all judgy animals. They just kind of look at you like you're a nuisance, you know? Like bring me food, clean up my filter and leave me alone, you know? They also kind of react to fish when you put them in there like a cat, like they're interested. They don't know like how to get them or what to do with them. Now I put really fast fish in my aquarium with my turtles so they never get caught, but it is hilarious when a new fish is put into the tank after a quarantine period and they kind of try to chase them around and are never successful like a lame cat. Imagine like cats with uh, armor on their backs that don't have long tails and can't really hurt you, but they don't have any problem trying to bite you. Cause I tell you what, anytime I pick up Buggy, he will try to side neck bite me. Now there's no denying today, eh? like this yellow belly slider has a yellow belly, right? But the reason it's got its name is because it invented the small hamburger, which we later called the slider, right? Like he's a snapping turtle. He never gets me, but he is not a fan of being handled at all. And like cats, they're carnivores, so they need to eat protein. There's no vegan cats or turtles. Unless it's a tortoise, because tortoises are tur- Okay, let's, well, let's move on. Before we move on with today's video, I wanna say a special thank you to today's sponsor, Magic Spoon. When I was a kid growing up, cereal was always on the menu, almost every single morning. But as I got older, I realized most cereals are filled with junk. Every serving of Magic Spoon has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs, and at only 140 calories per serving, this is the perfect snack or part of your breakfast. Not that long ago, I was really into fitness and I couldn't eat cereal at all. If Magic Spoon was around back then, my life would have been so much easier. But I'm still into fitness. 
Fitness, whole box of magic spoon in my face right now. So if you're looking to change your health for the better, but not get rid of cereal altogether, try some magic spoon today. You can even build your own variety box at the link below. I love putting frosted with the cookies and cream, with the peanut butter. I can't even tell you how good it is. And you can get $5 off if you use code Wiccans when you hit the link below. And Magic Spoon is confident in their product. If you try it and you do not absolutely love it, you can get 100% of your money back, no questions asked. So click the link below and use code Wiccans to get $5 off or go to magicspoon.com slash Wiccans for $5 off your order. Oh, also as a Canadian, I'm super excited because they now ship to Canada and the UK. How about that? I love Magic Spoon and I'm sure you will too. And let's get back to the list. Number three, White's Tree Frogs. Now White's Tree Frogs are absolutely amazing amphibians. They are not reptiles. I, I don't know why I need to. You'd be surprised how many comments I get if I don't say that amphibians are amphibians, not rep, like as if I don't know. But White's Tree Frogs of all the amphibians, of all the frogs are probably one of the most tolerant of handling. Just the way that their skin is composed, they are more robust when it comes to handling. If you don't know, handling frogs is frowned upon because they've got membranes in their skin. They can actually take in detergents and oils and things like that through their skin from your hands that could harm them. But White's tree frogs, they're from a little bit of a drier climate in comparison to most other tree frogs. And the way their skin is composed, they can tolerate handling better than most tree frogs. With that said, they still don't like being handled all that much. They will tolerate it, they love food, and you could be scratching them one minute and they're loving it, and then the next minute they just bite you. The nice thing is they don't have teeth like a cat because a cat bite doesn't feel good, I remember that, but white street frogs, if they bite you, it feels like, <clears throat> like a slimy sock. That's gross. My white tree frog, Muck, he will sit there and judge me from the top of his perch like all the other animals on the list. He kind of just climbs around wherever, and as soon as food arrives, we're best buddies again. But as soon as food goes away, he just kind of crawls away from me. And if I try to grab him, he'll tolerate it, but he will try to jump out of my hands. He might try to bite my fingers. He's just not a cuddly guy. Number two, Chinese cave geckos. I love Chinese cave geckos. I feature them a lot on the channel. They're a really great alternative to say a leopard gecko or an African fat-tailed gecko if you want something that is just as beautiful around the same size and is probably plotting your murder every second of every day. Look at them. If there was a most likely to be a serial killer amongst reptiles, I think this would definitely take the cake. Just the way these animals look at you, I wouldn't want to turn my back on them. They look untrustworthy untrustworthy geckos. Another cat-like thing about them and many other geckos with eyelids of similar sizes is they will poo in a corner. They will literally train themselves to poo in a corner. Not for your convenience, just because they like to be clean, like cats. You ever notice that murderers are always neat freaks? Cats. Now cave geckos are awesome because they're small, they like it kind of cool, a little bit more humid. So, oh, there's a care guy right here. I think they're awesome. They are amazing, but they're not the one you want for handling. If you want a small gecko to be handled, then you definitely get a leopard gecko or an African fat tail gecko. I wouldn't get a Chinese cave gecko. These ones will climb. They like to be perched up on things. They like to go places where they're not supposed to go, like behind their backgrounds. They're mischievous, they're cunning, they're plotting your murder murder every second of every day, just like a cat. But just the beauty of a Chinese cave gecko is why you might want one. Just the way that they kind of walk around. They're very, not awkward in their movements, but different in comparison to similar type animals. And I think that's why we like cats. If I go over, oh, the mist system is going now, great. Well, that's one of the reasons I like watching cats. If I go over to someone's house with a cat, I love the way that it just like moves around all cat-like, you know? I'm really reaching with this one. All I'm trying to say is they poop in corners and if you died, they would try to consume you. So they're, they're, all right, let's move on. All right, flute. Number one, you want nothing to do. See, it's cat-like, it's a cat-like dog. Number one, bull snakes. Now bull snakes are becoming very popular again. They weren't super popular, they were and then they weren't and it's like a cyclical thing with them. It's a very large colubrid as far as colubrids go. We're talking about six feet, even bigger than that sometimes, very thick around. I think they are beautiful, they're amazing, but they will hiss at you like a cat and their hiss is loud like a cat. And sometimes they are ornery like a cat. 
And they would also murder you if they were 10 feet bigger, like a cat. Again, mischievous, they are very curious. These animals will be looking at you at what you are doing. And I'm not sure what they're thinking, but whatever cats think when they look at you, that's what bull snakes think too. Now, to be more realistic, why you'd want one is a big, super beautiful with lots of morphs type of colubrid like this is sought after. They're big enough that they're impressive, but not so big that they might hurt you or be a threat to you. And you are totally fine if you don't handle these things for an entire week. They're not like a dog, where if you don't handle it every three seconds, it will cry and whine. Dear diary, mood, apathetic. These things do not care. I think most reptiles fit into this category, but with bull snakes, they tolerate handling, but that's about it. These aren't an animal that you're gonna take out all the time. Well, maybe it is if it's the only one that you own. Anyway, bull snakes are absolutely amazing. Of all the North American colubrids, one of the most beautiful and one of the coolest ones that there are out there. That's a Burmese python making lots of noise. So there you go, what do you think? Was this like the biggest stretch ever? Let me know in the comment section. What do you think is the most cat-like reptile that you've ever owned? Is there a reason that you'd want a reptile instead of a cat? Let me know in the comment section below. Uh, and that's it. Thank you very much to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking amazing. You know about all the updates in this room that are going on. You've seen new videos extra early. You get discounts on the merch, you get extra footage of Flutie being hilarious. For as little as a dollar a month, you can be part of the Patreon crew too. And um, that's it. Because we do videos twice a week, that means that we'll see you on Monday.